Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're talking about bacteria and how you can use it in your reef tank for everything from cycling the tank, keeping nutrients like nitrate and phosphate in check, managing and removing problematic tank ailments like cyano, and even improving coral coloration, health and growth. So most of us know that the idea behind cycling a new tank is to promote the growth of nitrifying bacteria in order to convert toxic ammonia and nitrite into nitrate. We provide an ammonia source back in the day, that was your first fish, then people moved on to a rotting prawn, and now most people will add a couple of drops of ammonia chloride, and then either wait a really long time for the natural cycle to run its course, or give it a big boost by using a bacteria source like Dr. Tim's one and only. Once the test kits show no ammonia and nitrite, and there is a nitrate reading, you're good to go. Well, yep, all of that is correct, but it's only the beginning of a much, much larger story around bacteria. So there's so much more to it than that. Ever heard of new tank syndrome, the ugly phase, cyano, dinoflagellates, and nuisance algae? What most of these things have in common is that they're often associated with new tanks or tanks that are suffering from some form of bacterial instability. As the tank matures, stabilizes, and settles, many of these things go away on their own over a long enough time frame. Or, with a bit of help from beneficial bacteria that outcompete them, they can be eradicated much quicker. Bacteria can also be used for nitrate and phosphate control. People have been doing this through carbon dosing for years. However, more recently, methods have evolved that don't even require the addition of a carbon source. For instance, with the advent and popularity of modern ceramic materials and more types of biological media on the market with massively higher surface areas, the hobby has, for some, shifted from nutrient control to now many people actually needing to feed more or dose nitrate and phosphate specifically to their tanks. What's the reason for this? Well, you guessed it, it's bacteria. There are strains of bacteria that propagate in those biological medias that actually consume nitrate and phosphate. Provided enough surface area and the right conditions for those bacteria, you'll never have a high nutrient issue. But the bacteria rabbit hole goes deeper than that. While reading various white papers for my research into coral nutrition and metabolism for my speculative look at Coral Essentials Black Label, video here, I came across a fair bit of research that suggests that coral's primary form of nutrient ingestion other than photosynthesis is actually through ingesting bacteria in the water column. It has been shown that the slime coats on coral actually act as bacterial farms. It is thought that through a healthy bacteria population in the water column, coral essentially breed a food source in their slime coats, which they then ingest for nutritional elements that they're unable to directly absorb or receive through photosynthesis. Thinking about this can give us a new lens on how and why various coral nutrition programs work. Are we feeding the coral, or are we actually feeding the bacteria that coral then eat? Certainly, if you read the research from Dr. Tim Hovank, the biologist behind Dr. Tim's one and only, and a number of other bacteria-based aquarium products, he has strong and compelling evidence towards the latter. Dr. Tim literally wrote the book on aquarium bacteria, and has more patents, published research papers, and accolades in the aquarium bacteria space than I can count. For reference, his PhD dissertation was specifically around the characterization of nitrifying bacteria, and that was in 1998. So he's been doing this a really long time. Dr. Tim has also shown in his research that some strains of probiotic bacteria, such as Bacillus, have the ability to inhibit the growth of known nasty bacteria like Vibrio, a pathogenic bacteria that has been associated with dreaded brown jelly and other types of coral infections common in the hobby. So what am I going to do with all this information and deep dive into bacteria? Well, I hope to demonstrate some results in my tank. The tank is now two years old, so it's mature and well and truly cycled. I won't be testing any of the cycling products like Dr. Tim's one and only, or the various other bacteria in a bottle products out there. Besides, we know they work, it wouldn't prove anything that hasn't been proven a hundred times before already. Thankfully, I don't have any cyano, dinoflagellates, or nuisance algae issues, but that also means I can't test any of those recipes or products either. Because I run an algae scrubber and have a very established and large amount of ceramic biomedia in my tank, I have no nitrate or phosphate issues. I'm not quite at ultra low levels, so I don't need to dose nitrate or phosphate, but I certainly don't want to lower them any further given I'm running a mixed reef. 
For reference, my nitrate's about three parts per million and my phosphate's about 0.04 at last test. This means I can't safely test any of the bacteria recipes for further lowering my nutrients. That leaves us with one last effect. Using bacteria to enhance the color of my coral, improve polyp extension, and improve growth. From what I've found, there are two primary products on the market aimed at doing this specifically with bacteria, and both of them are based on Dr. Tim's research. First, obviously, is Dr. Tim's own branded products through his Coloring Up Your Corals recipe for success. To follow that recipe, you need two of his products, being Dr. Tim's First Defense and Dr. Tim's Eco Balance. It's a program that requires you to mix the products in a container of salt water with an air stone, then dose the mixture on specific days over a 14 day period. The advantage of this approach is that you're essentially breeding as much bacteria as you need for dosing to the size of your tank. So it's more efficient and economical for really large tanks. The second product, and the one that I'm going to be using, is the Aquarium Systems Coral Color Up program. This program is super easy and simple to follow. Essentially, you buy a single kit that includes 15 vials of pre-prepared strains of various live bacteria. Each vial is labelled with a day on it and you pour the appropriate vial into your tank each day. Think of it like an advent calendar for your reef tank. So this is going to be my reef tank's Christmas present as I'm running the program through December. To give the program the best possible go, I'm going to follow the instructions exactly, dose the bacteria at the same time every day, and also set my skimmer to not run for a couple of hours every time I dose to give the bacteria in the water column a chance to fully propagate. To document my results, I'll be giving my subjective opinion on the coloration of my corals and the polyp extension, and will attempt to back it up as best as I can with photographic and video evidence from before and after the program. For coral growth, I can give much more firm evidence by tracking my alkalinity consumption, which is done really effectively six times a day through my KH lab, auto testing, and the automatic dosing control of the core seventh. Essentially, if my alkalinity drops, in turn, the dosing will increase. I'll be able to show the full history of my testing and dosing over the course of the program to be able to hopefully show increased consumption and therefore increased coral growth over the period of the program. So I look forward to taking you on that journey. You can expect the results and part two of this video by late December or early January, depending on how crazy the Christmas period gets for me. I hope you found this video helpful. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel.